Hey everyone, I'm Sue Daly and I'm really excited today to introduce you to Lindsay Marsh from Soda Grow. Yes. How you going, Lindsay? I'm really good. I'm so excited to show everyone how to make some pajamas today. It's going to be a lot of fun, I think. It is. It is. So just quick and easy pajama pants. There's a whole pattern for the top and the bottom. We're going to focus on the pants today. Um, everybody loves a good comfy pair of jammy pants that they put on when they come home from work yeah. or wherever. Um, and they're so simple. And Lindsay, the way Lindsay puts the clothes together, is amazing so everybody likes quick and easy i like quick and easy yes and i'm going to take you through how to measure properly pick your size show you how to grade between the different sizes so you get that really good fit um, i'm going to talk you through how to put in pockets and trace and all those little finishing techniques so that you can get the perfect pair of pajamas all right, so the first thing we're going to do is we have to get the right measurement so we know what size to trace out. So I'm gonna invite Sue to go ahead and step up <laughs> so I can reach her. All right. Do I need to go higher than that? No. No. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna do the waist um, first and I'm gonna measure around where she would like to wear her pants, so where the elastic's gonna go. So you show me where you like to wear Because I'm pajamas. a bit older, I wear them a bit higher. You wear them a bit higher. <laughs> Perfectly. <laughs> That's good. Everybody likes to wear their pants different. Um, inches or centimeters? Because my patterns are written in both. What do you like? Whatever's less. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're gonna go inches then. Okay. And I don't have to tell the crowd. I need them to be, yeah, I need it to be sort of there. Yeah. Like Harry high pants. Okay. So we're going to take that measurement. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to take three measurements for the hips. And then we're going to take the largest measurement of the three. Because we want to make sure, even though these are loose, wide leg pants, we want to make sure that they fall over our hips. So some of us carry our weight to the front. Some of us carry it to our back. I call it Bob, my big old booty. And some of us carry it in our thighs. So we just want to make sure that the pants go around that area. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put it around the higher part of your bum. And then I'm going to ask you to grab the tape so that it doesn't shift. And so we'll take your high hip measurement and then we'll come to the lower part. So the middle of your bum. Around where the bit sticks out the most. Yeah. And then that measurement and then we'll come a little bit lower we're getting really intimate here we are. <laughs> we're getting a bit close we'll be really good higher. friends at the end of this <laughs> okay so that's it super super easy if you have a friend to help you that would probably um, be a little bit easier yeah. and if you like to wear maybe a pair of uh, tights so that you can see the measuring tape a little bit easier that would help yeah. as well yeah, yeah. cool I'm going to hop down. Oh, don't fall. It's fine. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Now that I have Sue's measurements, we are going to look on the back of the pattern and select where her waist sits and where her hips sit. So most of us are a bit of a tic-tac-toe mm. of sizing. So you don't always have to fall into one sizing. So I like to circle where I am in the waist, where I am in the hips, and then I can easily grade between the two sizes. So we're back ready to get started on some tracing and Lindsay's gonna talk about her new fashion multi-tool. This is awesome. She uses this when she's grading her patterns out, but I'm gonna let her talk about it. It's such a wonderful tool. Thanks. Congratulations, Lindsay. <laughs> Thank you, I'm super excited to finally introduce it to the world. Not only does this have a French curve, it's also a seam gauge. It's for hemming. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to use for hemming a little bit later. It's for mitered corners and also a little bit of a point turner. So you can use this for so many different applications. But what we have here is I have my pattern, and then on top of it, I have a tracing interfacing. Now, Sue, when you do a pattern, do you normally trace it out, or? Uh, no, I normally chop into my pattern piece, oh. I, I have my pattern page, um, because, but seriously, I think that's probably the wrong thing to do, but I, it's always been something I've always done. However, I think I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> no. Well, actually, most people do that is what I find is once you chop into that paper, you you lose the pattern because if you, what if we change sizes? And we do. I mean, everybody's <laughs> doing that new keto, so you have no clue. 
once you've cut into this or maybe once you want to make one for your friend yeah, or something yeah. like that so i always like to use a lightweight tracing interfacing so it's non-fusible um you can even sew on this stuff you can use a basting stitch and mock up a little twill or something like that for you to try things on so i always like to trace it out so it, it um, preserves the integrity of my pattern i guess i'm not doing that anymore right no <laughs> i'll go no no sue don't do that so we're going to use the fashion multi-tool and we are going to use some little cute flathead pins and just pin this down and I like to use flathead pins so that my tool can easily go on top of them and not get caught because the ball head pins it kind of rolls on top of those so I just put a couple I of pins. I think these are the little Lori Hope pins aren't they? They are! Yeah. These they're are what I so use much. all the time at home because they're cute. Lindsay likes flat head pins so these are awesome for that and they're nice and sharp and we'll just put one over here and the other thing to remember is after you trace this out you want to label every little bit so you know back pant night bar and pajama set make sure you do your markings because once you fold this up and store it away and then you want to make another one you won't remember if it was a cuff or a pocket so it's really important to label you know, everything this is probably the one thing that I never placed much importance on was this short and length line mm -hmm. and because I actually am very short in the body it was the biggest mistake ever when I was dressmaking that I really didn't pay pay much attention to this but yeah. since I'm um, doing some stuff with you I've really learned how important that is it is because so make all, sure put on yeah. we're all different heights like <laughs> you can tell one of these things just ain't like the other one and that's true um and so the short and length and line is so important especially for crotch depth because all of us have different levels of where yeah. our waist is or where we like to wear our pants because yeah. i like to wear mine quite low at my hips you want yours a little bit higher so that short and then length and line is going to be really really important yeah so what we're going to do is we're going to use our fashion multi-tool so you have the straight edge to go ahead and draw those lines and here we are grading between a 3 and a 4x so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my tool and I'm going to line it up with the edge and then I'm going to just pivot it out to the next size so that we get enough of the crotch depth and we're grading between the two different sizes and then I can turn my multi-tool this way and easily trace that curve there and then I'm just gonna keep going. How cool is that tool? It's so easy to use. I like it because it just fits, it fits in my in hand. hand. It's not so, big and bulky. Yeah. Let's go down. And then I also have the straight edge as well. And so then you just are gonna go around this whole thing and trace out all of your pieces. Make sure you label them and then we can cut them out. Awesome. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so I've done a little bit of homework. Great. So I've traced out my pattern and then I've cut out my pieces but on my pattern I made sure I I put in my short and length and line and also up here at the top of the pattern sheet there's some buttonhole markings and they're for the um, little uh, used my little trio pencil there but that's for the tie that goes around the waist so there's elastic in the waist but then there's a little tie to tighten them up if you want and you can eliminate that yeah. if you're not super confident with buttonholes or your machine doesn't do an amazing buttonhole you can just eliminate that and just simply do elastic yeah just do the elastic so it even gets easier so um, I've traced all that out I've joined my pieces um, because on the pattern sheet it's the top part of the pants and then the bottom and so you just need to join them and Lindsay's, Lindsay's got great marks where you can join them together uh, I've cut out my pocket pieces and my cuffs so um, these are the little cuffs that go on the bottom and I'm guessing if you didn't want to do that either you could just make your pants a little longer so is that right yeah totally yeah. It, it would just make it even faster even faster yes and you so, can even eliminate the pockets if you want to make these in 30 minutes you probably could if you and, eliminated yeah, a few things and that would be me I'd be doing the 30 minute job yeah <laughs> So I've done all that and yeah. I've made sure I marked everything and I've you marked your pockets out, marked and, it all yeah yep. yep. perfect it looks like you have everything ready and we're ready to get started cool. so I go to the top of the class not really <laughs> <laughs> okay so um, I have we've marked the pockets on here and now 
Lindsay's going to talk me through um, what I need to do next. So, but first before we start, what seam allowance are we using? We are using 3 8 or 1 centimeter, and most sewing machines have a line where it is marked on their sewing machines. Okay, perfect. All right, and um, so this is obviously if you've got an overlocker, it makes life really easy, but if you haven't got an overlocker, You've just got a standard sewing machine. What do you suggest? Yep, I would suggest just using a zigzag. Usually you have a foot in your machine yep. that's an overcast foot and your machine may have a few different stitches and you can just practice with a few different ones of those to obtain uh, the stitch that you like. So I think just use a zigzag on your sewing machine. So you do a straight stitch and then a zigzag? I do. I yeah. always, even when I just use my overlocker, first, yeah. I always sew straight check it check it before you yep. wreck it and then i overlock the seam um another question is mm -hmm. when you do the zigzag on the seam do you do each side like when you open your seam up do you just sew them together with your zigzag or do you do them separately because i know you know years ago we used to open them up and do them separately and it yep. was so painful i see so many people do that um but for these pants and the heavy material, I would say go ahead and just overlock them yep. and zigzag them together. You don't need to do them individually. The, the pajama pants, if, really. If yeah. you are someone yeah. who really likes that nice, tidy finish and you want to do yep. it individually, you can. Um, but I would just do it together. Yeah, perfect. All right. It's just some people will have that same, you know, thought pattern as what I've had in the past. So, okay. So what are we going to do now? Yep. So we have our pockets and what we're going to do is I have cut little notches and if you're not confident cutting the, doing a little cut for your notches to match your pocket pieces, you can always just use your little marking pen. So I'm going to match those right sides together and then I'm going to use my pins and I'm going to go over to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew this at one centimeter. And then I'm going to press press it back like that. And then I'm going to repeat that three more times. So you're going to have two on the front and two on the back. Perfect. And that'll make a pocket both sides, right? <laughs> yep. Okay. That's awesome. Good. Okay. So we just, we're just working through the pattern as well. So always remember to refer to your pattern as you're working through because it's easy just to get carried away and think, yeah, I know how I'm doing. You know, I know what I'm doing. But sometimes, you know, Lindsay's got little tip, tips and tricks in here. So follow the pattern to make sure that you end up with the result you really want. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't really suggest that. Because, um, That's really <laughs> Okay, so we've sewn our pieces. We've sewn our pocket pieces in. Great job. And I've overlocked, but um, one of them I haven't. Yeah, that this one. This one here was just zigzagged. So it's if you saw this up close, there's not a lot of difference, but I know one's overlocked and one is exact. So, and you know, this stuff doesn't really fray a lot, no, no. but it just gives you that really nice professional fin finish on the inside. And the thing is with it too, it's so easy to sew, don't you think? Yeah, you yeah. Know, I found um, cutting it, sewing with it. If you're a beginner sewer, this is a great beginner project, yeah. and this fabric's so easy to yeah. work with. So it's just soft, and it's just I don't know, it's just easy. So we're just gonna press. Um, so this is the pocket sewn onto into the seam here. So I'm going to pull the pocket back this way and I'm going to press it with my seam allowance going into the pocket. So I'm going to use some of this. Do you ever use that? Yeah, always. Pressing? Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. I love it. I love the smell of it. Some of it smells, some of it doesn't. Depends yep. what you um, what you like as to what fragrance you choose. But that's flatter and um, it's an awesome product. Yeah, I love it because what it tends to do is it goes into the fibers and they tend to soak it up so that they kind of get moist and then yeah. when you press it they all dry so that those seams yeah. dry in place so yeah. i like to use it when i'm i think pressing really makes clothing look not handmade you know yeah. it makes it look um, absolutely that was a lesson that i learned years and years ago was that um, i always thought i could do things without pressing the seams <laughs> and it was a bit like that when i started patchwork too however i learned very quickly that pressing is a major Thing that you need to do to make it look really good yeah. and um, you know I use that on clothing but I also one of the main things I use it on is buy strips right you know, yeah because, um, holds it in place to, yeah, fold open so yeah and this is the only time I ever iron I don't really tend to iron much other than when I'm sewing it's the generation I think <laughs> yes. I yeah, think I it's shame, generation. shame on me. Yeah. And my yeah, husband, he can just up, iron yeah. his own clothes. So I need to turn that up because I think it's turned down. This isn't. So, yeah, so iron the seam 
into the pocket. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to top stitch that down, you can, but you don't need to. Yeah. That's great. So we're ready to move on and we are going to sew our front crotches together and our back crotches. And the way you tell the difference between the two is either you can label them or like Sue was saying a little bit earlier when we were talking behind the scenes. <laughs> um, the front crotch is always a little bit shorter and the back crotch is a little bit deeper. it has deeper. to fit your bum in it. It has to fit bob. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to pin those together and then we're going to go to our machine and sew them at the same one centimeter seam allowance. Perfect. Cool. All right. So we've gone, we've sewn our crotches together and now we're ready to make the outside of the pants. So we're going to take our front and our back and we're going to put them right sides together. Mwah! <laughs> and we are going to, this is really important to make sure that you pin from the top and then match those points where the pocket, where you're going to pivot. And I like to put a pin there. And then I also like to put another pin here where the pocket matches the pants and then pin down here um, at the very bottom so it's all evenly spaced out. So we're going to go and we're going to sew both the sides down outside around the pocket and then all the way down to the floor and do the same on the opposite side. Perfect. This is easy. It is so This easy. is like 30 minutes. I know. <laughs> I think the way you sew would be 30 minutes. So now we've sewn this together. It looks like I've yep. made an elephant really, doesn't it? It's got big ears. <laughs> but you did a really good job pivoting around the pocket. That looks really great. So now that we've done the outside seams, we're going to pin that inner crotch together. And I like to do it kind of like quilting. So one um, seam so one, goes one, one way. way. Yeah, so you lock them together. Yeah. Put a pin there because that's really important that awesome. those match up. And then I like to pin down at the bottom just so we match those ends And up. this just tells you whether I've been a good cutter or a bad cutter. And clearly I've been... Probably a bad cutter. A little. Yeah, a little bit. A bad. little. Yeah, just a little bit bad, but that's okay. We'll fix that up. Right. Yeah. We'll cut that in. There you go. And then we'll do the other side. Okay. And you a little bee. Thank you. Super cute. Okay. All and right. you can put, um, usually when I'm doing things that are really long, I like to put a pin in the middle, pin on the edge, and then middle, 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 so that I even and ease out the fabric in between the pinning because sometimes when we start pinning at one end and then pin towards the end, other end by the time we get to the other end it's completely off do you find that with yep. quilting as well I do absolutely and that's why I have a few tricks of what I use when I'm quilting but you'd have to watch that video um, <laughs> because your fabrics go through at a different uh, they, they sort of go through your machine differently and one pushes through for more than the other and so you end up with a little bit extra yeah. and so um, you can't just chop that bit off at the end. <laughs> you, you have to actually yeah. ease it in. So, and just be mindful of that. So, just pin it in the middle. Perfect. That looks great. So we're awesome. gonna go sew that and then zigzag or overlock it. Perfect. Okay, I've done it. I've sewn up the crutch. Woohoo! Fabulous. Looks so good. We have pants. Yep. Now we're gonna turn them right side out so that we can see how great of a job you've done. And just. For your information i realized i'm so short that i wouldn't have to put this cuff on the bottom yeah we're gonna have to use that short and lengthen and yeah. shorten them a little bit that's okay i can tuck yeah. them into the slippers <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna pop those pockets in like that why do you keep yeah. pulling them out i was just gonna pop it in because you're popping yours in i thought i'd pop mine in too <laughs> but you did them right they look really okay, good look pockets in your pajamas and you know what i use that pattern piece that same pattern piece and if i have a dress that doesn't have pockets i use that technique and i'll just pop pockets in whatever dress or skirt that i have because talking i love to the pockets. Expert right now. <laughs> yeah. so now that we've done all that i have already marked your <laughs> buttonholes on the front of your pants yep. Right and here. we are going to go over to your sewing machine and we are going to sew those little buttonholes yeah. now. Okay. So just remember though, if you don't if you don't know how to do buttonholes on your machine, don't be deterred by that because you actually don't have to have them. Exactly. You can just have the elastic if you want. So, you know, it doesn't matter. Yep. Right. So we are going to go do that. And if you're using thinner 
fabric, I always like to suggest to put a little bit of interfacing behind the buttonholes because it's quite a dense stitch and it can tend to like pucker and rip stitch your fabric. Stuff, yeah. I mean, this is quite thick fabric, so you may not need it for this, but yeah. um, your thinner quilting white cottons or rayons or anything yeah. like that, I would definitely put a little bit of a stabilizer underneath. Cool. Awesome. Okay. Oh. We're back. We are. <laughs> we are. And we have done some fabulous looking buttonholes. I promise you they really aren't as scary as you think they are. That They're was pretty really, easy, wasn't uh, it? Simple, like just a few, not even a minute. It just does it. It yeah. just does it itself, really. Once you set it up on your machine, it just does it. Yeah, perfect. So now that we've done that, I've turned the pants uh, inside out again and I am going to now use the fashion multi tool so all of these different lines here are your different measurements and they are in Imperial um, so between here and here is half an inch that's a quarter a quarter three eighths so you can mark at any distance that you want and we're gonna be marking at one and a half inch so I am going to line up the edge of my fashion multi tool and then go along the straight edge slide it along. Let me straighten that for you. Thanks assistant. <laughs> and then mark and slide. And I really like this as opposed to like one of those tiny seam gauges. Yeah, yeah. You, you only get that little bit where you can mark whereas this because it's this whole long edge yeah. I'm able to line it up with whatever I need to and do a big long line. So it makes it a lot quicker. This and is awesome. Yeah. I'm impressed, Lindsay. Very impressed. Thanks. I oh, try. Okay. <laughs> I might need one of those. Oh, here we go. <laughs> you can have that one. <laughs> okay, so now that we've marked, we're going to fold on that line and fold down. Now, I have already overlocked the edge. The edge. Um, if you don't want to overlock, you can always just fold that under a little bit and then fold it down. And then I'm going to pin that and I'm going to sew very, very close to this bottom edge because we don't want to sew too far in because we want our elastic to fit through the, yep, hole. the hole. Okay, thing. so fold down on the line and then pin and then sew close to this edge. Think you can manage? I think I can manage. I think you can manage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I've done the hem around the top. So we folded it over like Lindsay talked about and then I've just sewn with a straight stitch around the top. So now the buttonholes are right there in the middle. Perfect. So you know that that's the front. <laughs> yes. And now we're going to do the cuff. So um, in the pattern it tells you to cut four pieces for the cuff. So yep. um, I've just cut a grey. Um, now if you didn't want to do the cuff you could just have your pants a bit longer. Um, I think I spoke about that earlier. But in, the pattern has a cuff and it's a, just a nice trim around the bottom. So we need to cut four of these. And then what I'm going to do is take them to the machine and I'm going to sew the short edge and the other short edge yep. and um, then I've got one here that I did before. Here's one, one I prepared it. earlier. <laughs> so we just sew the two ends like yeah. so and then we just fold it in half. And I like what you've done, you press the seam open. I pressed uh, it open, yeah, yeah only like because it's, um, you could have pressed, you, well you can't really press one side to the other. Um, with this because they would have both gone to one side. Right? Yeah, exactly. So press it open just so it sits a little bit flatter and then I always just give, well for me, I always just give it a press so that it is going to sit flat when we sew it on. Yeah, perfect. Um, now if this, this is flannel so it's quite um, stable and it doesn't move terribly much but if you're using a, like a rayon or something like that it's a bit it moves around a bit. Yeah, so so, so I like to, if, if I'm using something kind of squirmy, I match up those raw edges and I'll just take my machine and put it on a base stitch, which yep. is the longest stitch length, and I'll go about a quarter of an inch mm -hmm. in about six mils and just go around the top edge so that it doesn't shift um, as you're sewing. Yeah, it. when you go to put it on yeah, the Yeah, yeah. So it's nothing worse than getting it all done and then half the... Yeah, and I, I also love the cuff because it's kind of a cheater's method to hemming. So Absolutely. instead of turning yeah. something up twice, um, the cuff makes it a really nice finish. Sometimes when I have skirts that are too short because I'm quite tall, yep. I will just make one of these and then add it to a bottom yep. of the skirt and it hems the bottom of, maybe I bought it at a I've got a couple shop or something. Of, I've got a couple of dresses that have done, got that on. And yeah. it's really neat. And it's cute. And it, yeah. And it, the actual hem sits so flat, mm -hmm. so that's what I like about it. Yeah. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take the bottom of my pants and then line up the bottoms. And then I'm going to use my fancy little pins and put those in and pin around them. So 
But what I was wondering is, we've been using this today, and I'm not quite sure what that okay, is. Okay, so that's a stash and store. It's an awesome little um, thing. It's it, so it stores everything. So it's like a it's rubber on the top here, mm -hmm. but you can just all your things. You can just poke them in, and they sit in there. So your scissors, oh. and and of course your little tool here, pens. So they're all out of the way. Yeah. Because normally I've got it everywhere. Yeah, I have mine like in my little bag. bag yeah. One of those little bags, and so yeah. I'm searching through it. But that's way cooler. Yeah, and it comes in a few different colors. There's pink and red, and like a mint and gray. And but it's an. Yeah. It's, I love it. I love it. And I actually have one in the caravan, so that um, I can stuff it all in there. And then when we move around, I don't yeah. have to put it all away. I can just put it in a cupboard or, or under the bed where yeah. everything else goes. Neat. Yeah. Well, I think that's something really really handy to have yeah, I love it. on your desk Stash and, store. and it looks cute because I'm all about making my sewing room look cute so I've put my pins in and now you can go sew that at a centimeter okay. and then overlock it and we're gonna do that to both bottom of the pants leg and then we're nearly at the finish. All we have to do is the elastic <laughs> and the ribbon. Like, this is my favorite part. We're so close Finished. to being done. And then, can we have a pajama party? We can. Yeah. We can. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go and do that bit. Okay, so I'm back. I've sewn my cuffs on. How easy was that? Yeah, they look really good. So it just gives them, you know, that makes them look really professional. People yes. think you bought them. Yes. Okay, so now we're going to do the elastic. So we've cut the elastic. Yep, I just measured around her waist and then subtracted about two inches because we, you know, the elastic's quite loose and we want our pants to come and fit us. And then we are going, I've put a safety pin on it and we are going to start in one of the buttonholes and we're going to go all the way around and come back out the same buttonhole so that we can join the elastic together. Okay, so, so I'm just going to poke it in there now. This is probably going to be okay. However, from my past experience, sometimes I would thread that all the way through and I'd pull it and then it'd all come out. So, no, I don't have anything better except I usually pin the end down somewhere yes. so I don't rip it out. Yeah. That's my only thing because I know what I'm like. I'm just a bit, you know, I do things in a hurry. Yep. So safety pin works. I've also used um, a bodkin. A bodkin, yeah. Yeah, yep. that seems to work quite nicely. And you just literally push push the fabric onto the pin and then hold on to the safety pin and then run the fabric um, the opposite way. So if you've never put elastic in anything before, it's super, super oh, it quick amazing. and simple. And pajama pants are usually, I think, what people should start with yeah. because um, it's something you're going to wear at home and so you're in the privacy of your own home so nobody's going to see it. Um, even if, I mean, you could go take trash out if you really <laughs> wanted some people to see it. Um, but I just think pajamas are such a great way to start with your sewing. Well, there's or... a couple of things that you learn. I mean, mm. it's just basic sewing, but there's also, um, you know, the doing the buttonhole, threading the elastic, putting the the um, the bottom piece on, just a couple of little yeah. things. And they're simple things that don't, you know, that... It's not daunting at all. Yeah, and yeah. it's a forgiving fit, so Absolutely. you're not having to worry about those fit yeah, issues. Yeah, the pajama pants. Yeah, and um, my patterns go from extra small to 4XL, so very generous sizing. And then we also have the mini set, and this goes from uh, 12 months all the way to 12 years. So you get all of the kids' sizes, so it would be it really is. cute. Um, to make some matching yeah. mommy and me outfits and you can make them into shorts uh, Cut on the short and lengthen line up at the top when you get your pattern You'll be able to see that you can cut them and make them into shorts yeah. quite easily because in Queensland it is Really hot right now. It I don't is. know if I'd be making <laughs> pajama pants at this time. No, but, but in the but winter, very soon Yeah, it does now get cold the, in the winter time at yes. night so um, Do you know what I saw at Christmas a lot on Instagram was all these families having matching pajamas yes it's it's very it's american like, too like I've i know my family before. every christmas my mom would give me a new pajama set so well, i did that as really, a child yeah. but i didn't match anybody else's in the family oh no, no. you got a match no and i thought oh hmm, that's pretty cute and so yes. well, everybody had the matching pajamas yeah and this is like you saw how quick it is i know for christmas i made my dad a pair and i made my nephew and my niece and my mom and so i made a whole bunch of different pairs and I spent one day and I did all the cutting and then I spent the next day and it only took me a few hours to 
make up a few of these. Well, that's pretty. That's awesome, actually. Yes. <laughs> Awesome. Oh, and look, look you're all the, way around. all the way around and I've pulled it out here. Yeah. So I'm just trying to just get this around so I can, cool. um, it's easy for me to sew the two pieces together because I want to pull this through a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. And then I unpin, unpin that, that yeah. and then I make sure it's not twisted. And <laughs> Which then it could highly like, well, highly likely to be twisted. And then I overlap them yeah. like this. And then I like to sew a box around it and then do a little bit of an X in between. Sure. Just because it gets a lot of wear and tear and we want these to last. So if you sew a little box around it and then put an X in the box, they will stay nice and tight. And then we'll pull the pants so that the elastic goes on the inside. And then you can pick which ribbon you want. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> we okay. have choices. Oh, we have choices? Excellent. Cool. Okay, Let's go sew that. Yes. Perfect. Alrighty, so I have put the elastic in there, so you don't want it too tight because no. it is something that if you're wearing it to bed, you don't want to choke you around the waist. Okay. So um, the elastic's in there. Now I've chosen some ribbon, so I've chosen this little um, cotton ribbon. It's got a little tape measure on it, but it's pink, so it's going to match my pajamas. Yeah. But I could have had white or whatever you want. Yeah, we have fun. lots of different options. Yep, and so it's really up to you. Um, and I'm going to thread that exactly the same way as I did the elastic. Yeah, so just using a safety yep, pin. And I'm going to thread that through so I can do that. Um, now, I think um, the other thing that's really sweet is we've got these little um, sewing labels, which um, if you're going to do it, you would do it when you're making the pants. But these are really cute um, woven labels. Yep. So this one says made with love, stitched with with love and happiness, handmade for you by, and you can put your name in there. Um, these are just little black and white ones, so much the same. The sweetest things in life are made by hand, wash on cold, tumble dry, snuggle often. Um, yeah. They're optional too, but if you're making it as a gift for someone, like grandparents making it for their grandchildren, it's always fun to put a little thing in there because the, the, you know, the kids um, remember that. Yeah. Um, just a fun little add-on though. Yeah, I love it. If I was gonna do it, I would just put it in this little seam right here when I fold down before I put the elastic in, I would just sew it in as a little tag yeah. or you can stitch it down on both ends yeah. Um, yeah. before you fold that down. Yeah. But I think it really, you know, gives it that nice little personal touch when yeah, you have your so. own little handmade little tags as yeah. well. So, All right. so, so we we absolutely smashed it today. We did. I we cannot did. believe how much we've gotten done in such a short amount of time because these pants really are super yeah. quick. Yeah. I think, you know, like if you were what do you think? Like an hour or something at the most? At the most. Like I, me being like the way I am, a bit hyperactive, I'd probably knock them out in just over 30 minutes. But yeah. the average person, maybe an hour, even if it's an hour and a half, doesn't matter. That's You've still got pajama pants. Yeah. And yeah. that's a lot cheaper than probably some other options out yeah, there. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. And absolutely. then they're tailor made to fit your yeah. body. So you can make them in all different sorts of fabrics like I was talking about earlier. You can make it in quilting weight cottons because you probably um, have a whole stash of them at home somewhere. Yep. <laughs> um, especially the kids. That would be such a great scrap buster because it does not take that much That's fabric right, yeah. uh, to make the kids pajamas. We also have a, a version here in beautiful drapey rayon and that's super comfortable and lightweight to wear. The pattern also comes with a top. We didn't make the top today, but the top is just as simple. I actually as saw Lindsay whip her top up this morning in less than 10 minutes. <laughs> it was like, it was already cut, yeah. but it was like 10 minutes, she was done. Yeah, yeah. it's super fast. Uh, the other thing is because it's such a basic singlet, that I've made it in tinsel, I've made it in other fabrics, and I've just worn it as as a top out in public. So you have lots of variations. Not even as jammies. Not even as jammies. And even the pants, wide leg pants, make them in a chambray or make them mm -hmm. in um, some sort of nice flowy fabric, put on some heels and a cute little top. And yeah. you can wear these pants pretty much anywhere. You don't have to wear them just to bed. Yeah, that's right. So that's it. It's really awesome. And um, so I just want to say thanks to Lindsay today because this has been a fun day. Normally it's been so much fun. <laughs> normally I'm filming on my own, and but having someone filming with you is a way different ball game. I can tell you, it's so fun. Yeah. But thanks, Lindsay, for coming in and sharing um, your knowledge with us. 
and all your tips and everything so you know yeah. look out for Lindsay's patterns and she's on the road teaching a lot you yeah. know she's an international teacher um, she designs all these patterns so um, keep an eye out for her she's got some amazing stuff but and if you can get to one of her classes get to one of her classes because it will be a game changer for you yeah. if you're making clothes for yourself yeah it's called fit to flatter are the name of the classes and i walk everyone through it doesn't matter your size your shape uh, we go through um, different fitting techniques yeah. and how to get clothing to fit you perfectly yeah and i think a lot of women like that it makes you feel really good when you have when you're walking around in public wearing something that makes you feel beautiful your shoulders go back and you stand a bit taller and um, yeah and it's, really it's fitting nice you way. like it's not yeah. just getting off the rack and you know how many times you go in and you think you're a particular size you get off the rack and you can't even get your leg into it because it's so little and yeah. it's like because every size is different but this is you get your sizes worked out and then you can make whatever you want and it always looks really good yeah. So thanks, Lindsay, for coming in today. Thanks, Sue. Really thanks for it. having me. I had You're a welcome. great time. You're very welcome. Pajama party! Absolutely. Oh, something more comfortable. And it's got pockets. Look at us. Where's the wine? Are you going to get some wine? We could. <laughs>